Now today we're continuing with the intake valve control solenoid. If you did not see the previous episode, ultimately I went over the steps on how to locate this, test this for the passenger side or the right hand side of the engine. This today is for the other side, the left hand or the driver side. So P28, 82 and 83, I believe. So that being said, to test this fortunately is easy. To replace it is something else all entirely different, entirely different. So let's first jump over to the vehicle. Let me show you where it's located. We'll test it and then I'll tell you in detail how to replace it and I'll, I'll splice in videos from the past I've done uh, because again, it's a lot of steps to replace this. Now fortunately, locating the sensor is easy enough. Driver's side, here's where you insert the oil, your dipstick, and then right here. Super, super simple. Let me turn on a light. Now to test it, two things. First, we want to verify that power is getting to the solenoid. Don't worry about this. Now this is an oil pressure switch, just for diagnosis only. We're not dealing with this, you want this guy. So right here, there's a tab, press down the tab, pull up on the body, don't pull on the wiring. Now I want to verify that power is getting to this harness connector. Now to test that power is getting to that harness connector, this is just a digital multimeter. Do not be intimidated by these if you've never used one. $20 or so. I'll have some links in the description box below to our Amazon affiliate site if you happen to need one of these. Again, around $20 if that's all that they go for. And you want, in this case, volts DC. Okay. Now take a look at the harness connector. And what I'm going to be using, actually let me zoom out, is just a wire with two alligator clips. This just makes it a lot easier to do this test. Not necessary, but makes it easier. Just taking the end of the alligator clip and you have two prongs. I'm just taking the clip and touching the prong on the left, okay? Make sure it seats in there nicely. And then And then, going back to the multimeter, I'm just making the connection. Alligator, that's it, easy. Now the black wire from the multimeter is going to ground. That's any good metal point, so something like the alternator, for example. So the first thing I need to do is turn on the ignition key. So you're not going to start the vehicle, just turn the key to the on position. Now on the multimeter you want the volts DC setting and if you have a fully charged battery you should see around 10 volts worth of power getting to this harness connector. In my case this battery, this car has not been started in maybe two weeks so the battery is most likely discharged. But let's just see what we come back here. So let me just find a good ground. Again that's good, any good metal point on the body. And let's see what we come back with here. There we go, 6.33. Again, the battery is low, but this verifies that power is at least getting to the harness connector. Now, chances are when you do this test, you won't have a problem here. This is just verifying that power is getting to the solenoid. But if you do this test and nothing comes back, check the back of the wiring, especially if the car has been sitting for some time, you'll get mice and so forth just to eat away, eat away at the wiring. But uh, you gotta find that break. But if everything looks good there, now we can test the solenoid itself. Now testing the solenoid is quite simple. Take a look at the part. This is where the harness connector plugs into. And you'll find two prongs, one on the left, one on the right. All that you're doing is taking the two leads, the red lead and the black lead from the multimeter, and just touching directly to these two leads. Does that matter if the black lead is touching the right or the left? Does not make a difference whatsoever. Two leads touch these two prongs. So let me set it up. Now once again to make this a little bit easier I'm just using alligator clips. This just frees up your hands. So one lead to the multimeter. Okay, so now we have both leads hooked up. And on the multimeter, you want the ohm setting. 
Okay, that's the omega symbol on the multimeter. And a good reading is 6 to 12 ohms. So let me back this out. We have one more connection, and let's see what we have. So we have right on the money roughly 9.9, 10 ohms. So that tells us the solenoid is working perfectly, perfectly fine. The reason why you want to test it is because you can have a check engine light, but the solenoid is fine. You may just have dirty oil. So if that's the case, Subarus are finicky when it comes to this solenoid. Make sure you change your oil on time. Otherwise, it's going to throw this trouble code. But if the oil is clean, you have trouble, and you do need to replace it, how in the world do you do it? Now we're able to see two fasteners right here holding on the solenoid. There's another two that you cannot see that's behind this rear timing belt cover. This is the front cover and this is the rear cover. There's actually, uh, these separate. So the long story short is there's a lot of work to do. What you need to do is remove the drive belt. You need to remove the crankshaft pulley, then the timing belt cover, then the timing belt itself and then the camshaft sprocket. So once you remove all of these accessories, you'll have clear access to the solenoid, which I will show how to replace in a minute here. Two videos. One will be a timing belt replacement video. I'll include the link in the description box below. And in that video, the first half is just taking apart the front of the engine. So the drive belt, the timing belt cover, the crankshaft pulley, that's this right here, and the timing belt. So that's the first video. The second video, which is maybe three minutes long, is showing how to remove the camshaft sprocket. So watch those two videos. You can get clear access to everything, remove everything, and then tackle the solenoid. And the solenoid is just simply held on by these four. That's all they are, four 10 millimeter fasteners. And this comes right off. And then once you take out the last fastener, just watch because there's a gasket in the back. And that's it. So it's a lot of steps. You can do it, but just take your time. That's the bottom line. I have no idea what a shop would charge for this, to be perfectly honest, but there's a lot of hours built into this. So that's what it takes to replace this solenoid. Again, it's a lot of steps. At least at home, you can test this at the very least. So thank you for watching, and in my case, I'm going to continue with this uh, rebuild so we can get this car up and running.